What? 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 Why? Did she wear this outfit? It's beyond me. But it's frustrating. Well, it's happening again, you guys. We are being assaulted visually by ginormous pants once again at an Invictus event from Meghan Markle. Hey everybody, I'm Beebs Kelly. Welcome back to another video. Thank you so much for being here with me. Today we are going to take a look at Meghan Markle's appearances thus far at the Invictus Games. So her first appearance there, we saw her giving a weird little off-the-cuff speech. It totally came off as scripted in my opinion. I'm not sure why the press keeps running with it was off the cuff. It didn't sound off the cuff to me. It didn't sound improv to me. What do you guys think? Anyway, she was wearing this Banana Republic shirt waist dress, which actually wasn't that bad of a choice for her. Now, it's black, and should she have been wearing black? She kept saying she needed some color in her life as far as clothing goes, so why isn't she wearing like blue or or, or something bright and, and exciting? I don't know. Anyway, the dress itself is not a bad choice, except she ruined it with this braided belt. It did not need a braided belt plopped in the center. It just didn't need that. Her figure would have benefited greatly by skipping the belt and just letting the dress be with a slightly more minimized, like simple waistline happening without that belt. It would have just been a better choice as far as her figure goes. The length of the dress is really great. The the V-neck from, you know, the button-down style is actually a pretty good choice because V-necks are quite flattering on her body type and it elongates her neck, which she has a slightly shorter neck, so that's always a great choice. If you are a little bit more petite or just have a short neck to do something that elongates it a little bit, like a V-neck. It was unbuttoned too far, though. It was unbuttoned really deeply and it just didn't need to be. It felt a little bit unprofessional having it unbuttoned, that extra button there. Um, just why? Why is she doing that? It's weird. This isn't an event to try to be sexy at. I'm not sure why she would try to reveal like maybe her bra or something by unbuttoning it that far. It was a bit odd. Since the skirt is not too voluminous and the hem is at a good length for her, it minimized the twigginess or lankiness of her limbs, which as we know with her, she has such skinny and longer limbs in comparison to her wider, shorter torso that sometimes they can look out of balance a little bit or just kind of mismatched in a way. And this did a great job of hitting her at a good spot and not being too wide of a dress line, you know, so that it just kind of, you know, flattered her legs, made them look more balanced for her body type, which was great. So the proportions there were good. As far as the shirt goes, you know, uh, she didn't need to roll it up in that slightly messy way, but it's black, so you cannot notice that they are rolled up sloppily. But here in this picture, she did the floppy hands. Floppy hands. You don't want to do that. When you're giving a speech or, or having your pictures taken, you don't want your hands to look floppy and unintentional. You want to just hold them in a way that shows more intention and professionalism. And it's also a little bit more commanding when you are in control of your hands and your wrists and don't flop them. By the way, in all of these pictures, is Harry's baldness not alarming at this point? Moving on to the next day, she had like three different outfit changes in one day and it makes me wonder how necessary that is. But this ensemble in general is really bad. Like this is bad, okay? The huge shorts are a problem. What is she doing? A while back, I mentioned how literally nobody should be expected to tailor every single pair of shorts that they wear. When she was leaving some sort of meditation studio where she was wearing those big wide brown shorts that were similar in style as far as their like rise and whatnot. And I stand by that. Nobody should. In that instance, she was in a private capacity, like running an errand or going to a meeting. She wasn't on display, right? But here she should have tailored these shorts to fit her better, to just shrink down the width of the legs. I understand with her body type she needs to order a bigger size to fit around the waist because she has that boxier torso. Nothing wrong with that. But if you have particularly thin legs paired up with that, then you will get this effect where your shorts are too wide and it leaves these gaping leg holes around your tiny little twig legs. This is only going to enhance the appearance of having twiggy, lanky limbs that are too thin for your boxier torso, especially because the shorts themselves are slightly voluminous. You know, they're that sort of tailored fit with the pleating in the front, so they're a bigger style of short, less, you know, fitted. So this would have been an occasion to splurge for the tailoring. I am 
befuddled by this. It looks a little bit like those shorts I was wearing the other day that were like three sizes too big. You don't want to do that, especially if you are attending professional engagements and having pictures taken and you're on display, which is what is happening here. So 100%, 100% you would want to get them tailored. This is silk. Just try a skirt or, or tailoring for once. I mean, for goodness sakes, this just enhances the wrong things. It enhances the blocky torso, the wider torso, and the lanky thin limbs. It just enhances the negatives of your proportions. And she has positives to her proportions. You know, being fit and thin is a positive. You, she's got a lot of positives, but she's bringing out all the wrong ones here. That's what I can say for sure. This is bringing out the wrong proportions. As far as the cardigan, blazer style cardigan goes, it's fine. It's just everything she paired it with. These way too high rise shorts with the belt drawing all the attention like immediately under the bust because they're way too high paired up with the ginormousness of the shorts, it just doesn't work. But generally speaking, if she would have had mid-rise shorts on that were a little bit more fitted and not gaping around her legs or just had like some sort of a skirt on, maybe a slightly pleated or partially pleated skirt, perhaps that wasn't pulled up super high or a dress underneath, an A-line dress underneath this cardigan would have been a great option. Maybe even something with a bit of color. However, the cardigan should have been maybe a size smaller so that it wasn't quite as big and loose. And when she pulled it up on her arms, you know, it just emphasized that it was a little bit too big. Also, the white of the cardigan doesn't match exactly the white of the shorts. So it's not like it was a perfect outfit anyway. The shoes are a good option actually to shorten the sort of long feet that she has. She has lankier limbs, she's got longer feet, and so by having that black toe it actually helps to sort of visually shorten the feet a little bit, make them look slightly more proportionate. I think honestly that like a ponytail or some sort of half up or an updo would have been a great option for this day just to give a little bit more of a sporty vibe since this is a sporting event. Overall, that outfit was a massive fail. It just looked overly messy and ginormous. Next up, we have this outfit here that was the best outfit I've seen her in so far on this particular trip. By the way, I think the majority of these events, aside from that very first one, are daytime events. So overall, her eye makeup is overboard. Makeup in general is a little overboard. She's wearing way too dark of foundation and bronzer and too much of it. She's got too much highlighter going on. I mean, look at her nose in this picture. It's just too much highlight on the tip. And, and of course, her eye makeup is too dark. I do not understand why she won't just put a light color on her lid. It would be so much more flattering to her and to skip the lower lash line liner all of the time, especially for daytime events, would be more flattering on her face. It just would with her eyes. It would allow them to be brought out just a little bit nicer. If you haven't seen my video on her makeup, then I will link it for you. Go check it out. The black jeans here are perfect. They are mid-rise. This is exactly what she should be wearing with her bottoms like literally 100% of the time. She bloused the top out over the jeans just a bit, which gives the illusion of a better or more, you know, tapered waistline underneath, which is great. And since the tank top doesn't cut in the way a halter top does, it does help to minimize the width of her shoulders, which helps balance her thin legs and arms. It's not that wide shoulders are bad inherently at all. It's just that for her body type, paired up with the boxy and wide torso and the lanky limbs and the short torso, then having her shoulders be, you know, in enhanced in their broadness or a focal point is just gonna throw things off balance a little bit. So like finding ways to sort of slenderize a little bit of the shoulder area can just bring a little bit more balance to her overall look. And the 7 8 length of her jeans here is a great choice to reduce the lankiness of her legs by cutting that vertical line a little bit higher up than like full length jeans would. It just looks so much better balanced here than she looks as compared to like the return of the giant pants coming up. Overall, her body looks well balanced and her silhouette is so much more flattering here. But before we get to those ginormous pants, 
making a mysterious return to presence for no good reason, we have the white Ralph Lauren sweater vest look here with white jeans. This top is not the worst choice for her. Having a v-neck again is a great choice, but I think that if the color was swapped with something darker or a pattern or even just a color, it would have been more flattering because the white doesn't do quite as good of a job of slenderizing those shoulders, which as we spoke about in the previous outfit isn't a necessity, but it would help out her specific proportions. However, the top itself is ruined by the partial tuck that she did, which exposed this messy waistline of her jeans that are looking too tight here. When the belt loops are bulging out like this and puckering out and the zipper cover area is also puckering and not closing and folding over the zipper all of the way, that is an indication that the jeans are too tight. And since you can see the zipper, you can see these parts of the pants bulging, and you can see a lot of creasing around like the hip and lap area and around the knees, these jeans are likely a size too small for her. She should have just left the top untucked and cover that situation because she still would have appeared smaller beneath that top being that it's a sweater vest it's got some texture to it it would have actually been a lot more flattering of an outfit if she would have just left that top be untucked in this instance because the messiness that the waistline area of these jeans gave is just way too distracting and reads far too small so it's strange and it throws off the entire look also, why not opt for some like white trainers here? I feel like the black shoes with the ankle strap is a weird option, especially since there's also a bit of a zipper on the bottom of those 7 8 length jeans here. That's just creating a lot of noise down there by her ankles that she doesn't need. If she would have had just some sleek like Air Force Ones or the sneakers that she was wearing before, I feel like that would have been a way better option here and would have matched the event being sporty, it would have looked a lot cuter, it would have stuck with the all white sort of theme. I do not like the shoes in this instance, though they are flats, which is nice to see her not wearing heels at impractical moments. Okay, Ugh. return of the giant pants. It is literally a nightmare. You could make a horror movie out of these giant pants because they're just eating her alive. They're eating up her feet, they're eating up her shoes. I dislike them a hundred and thousand percent. What is happening? Like, why would you do this? Especially after how much ridicule she got last year when she wore ginormous pants. These are a complete mystery to me why she is choosing these pants. What's happening? Fun fact, a trademark of a psychopath is that you do not learn from your previous mistakes. These types of people continue to get themselves into the same sorts of pickles over and over and over in life. And I'm just gonna leave that here. Just a random, completely unrelated fact that I was reminded of due to the fact that she is repeating the mistake of the ginormous pants. Why would you wanna wear your grandpa's pants? I'm just saying, you look like you're wearing somebody else's pants. You look like you're playing dress up when you wear something that is way too huge and oversized and you know not hemmed properly in a professional capacity. Again, normal day-to-day -day folks wearing what they have is understandable. We do not have the same types of budgets and we're not doing the same types of activities. If you are there to be an ambassador of some sort, you are there to be professional in your appearance and having something on that is clearly far too big and not hemmed or tailored in any way and not ironed is rude disrespectful, unprofessional, messy, sloppy, distracting, insane. <sighs> Moving on, silky shirts are indeed a great trend this year. In fact, I just got one. They are actually really great for fall. They have this sort of light, rich vibe to them that's very, very flattering. I love silky shirts. I've loved silky clothes since I was a child. I think they are fabulous. And luckily here, I'm not seeing any indication that she didn't have on the proper undergarments here because silky shirts are notorious for catching on like your bras or the texture of your bras if you have like lace or, or darts or anything on your bras. Silky shirts are bad for that, they will show it. And she didn't have any bra show here, which is great. So I have no qualms with her top. In fact, it's a lovely top with the exception of the color. I wish she would have tried like purple or blue or red or, or pink, blush even champagne, something other than brown and, and white and black. That's all we see her in lately. But 
I have no qualms with the top. I'll take that top any day on her. Great choice. But why? Why do we have these huge pants? The rise is way too high. They are pulled up way too high. They are wrinkly as all get out. They're way too huge. There's way too much room in them. They're far too wide legged for her and they are far too long. It makes her stance look awkward. Now we know she has an awkward stance and she doesn't tend to pose for pictures in the most flattering of ways but this makes it worse having these huge pants that are literally eating your shoes and resting on the grass, bunching up on the grass. They're so long, it's insane. Why would you wear this? I get having long drapey style of pants. It's a look, it's totally fine, but you don't actually want them to be covering up your shoes and bunching along the floor, Megan. You don't want it to be that long. That's not the look. It completely ruined the otherwise just fine trendy top that I thought looked quite nice. And despite me not liking shiny fabrics, this particular type, this sort of satiny type, is muted when it comes to flashes. So it's so much better than the like true shiny silk. Let's choose something tapered, something straight leg, something only slightly wide and hem them properly. That's all you have to do. The belt is also flopping about, but at least it's not humongous and in a contrasting color. So it kind of blends into the pants, but it's flapping around. Another pet peeve, just get a little fabric tape and stick it down. Even like moleskin tape can do a great job of sticking down a belt. There should be no floppy flappy belts when you are doing an engagement like this. So, so far we have a real mixed bag on her looks. We have less center parts this time around, which is great. She's got more side parts. These are so much more flattering for her face. So hallelujah there. We have too dark of makeup though, so no improvement on that front. She's giving lots of white, black, brown, cream, tan. The neutral theme, I guess, is still stuck. Unfortunately, some color would have been most welcome at this type of event. It's more sporty, it's more casual. Why, in these sorts of settings, is she not playing around a little bit with color and more fun, sort of active looking silhouettes? It's one of the things that I really like about Catherine, Princess of Wales, is that you can tell she's sporty because when she's going to an event, she wore something truly athletic, there to participate, there to do something sporty. And she always does that. And it's part of dressing for the occasion, but it also is clear that she's truly sporty at home. So I guess maybe Meghan Markle is just not the sporty type. She just doesn't enjoy doing these sorts of active activities. Maybe it's just not part of her personality and vibe, but I still think that the, the effort could be made to just dress in a little bit more sporty of a fashion. Not all of her looks have been out of place, but some of them have been. And the boring colors are definitely kind of indicative of that, that, you know, even if you're gonna wear something more formal, you could still spruce it up with some color and have fun there. The many unnecessary frequent outfit changes over the course of just like one single day at a time send the message that this is sort of a marketing thing for you primarily, that you're after the photo ops. You know, she didn't bring her kids with, she doesn't have any real reason to be skipping out for big chunks of time to just change the outfits and get all fixed up in a different look to come back for just the photo op sort of a thing or like a few more pictures here and there. It sends the message that you're spending more time away from the event than you are actually there at the event. Now, I would totally understand one outfit change when you're transitioning from attending the sporting events throughout the day to having like some sort of reception in the evening. That makes sense. But she's changing her outfit in between various sporting events. So she's like going and watching one event in one outfit and then changing to a different outfit for the next one. It's just a bit odd and I don't think it's sending the right message of I'm here to be present and to watch this and to actually appreciate the event for what it is and these amazing people who have been through amazing, really intense things and have these incredible journeys that are harrowing and heroic and just beyond what most people experience in terms of physical challenges and mental challenges. And she's not giving it the attention that I think it deserves when she's constantly worried about changing outfits. 
We've also seen her striving to pull Harry away from the crowd or away from the moment, whatever task they were doing, to try to move along to the next thing. We've seen that quite a few times, so there's no improvement there in terms of like following Harry's lead instead and kind of hanging back and letting him do his thing at his event. We don't really have any improvement on that front either, um, but we do have v-necks rather than halter tops and we have some mid-rise jeans making appearance rather than the super high rise so there's there's some improvements which i am a little surprised by but still we have the other things that are just big flops we've also seen a lot more of the weird times to do the hand holding are you here to help engage with people or are you here in a personal capacity just as a spectator because if you're there just to spectate Hold hands by all means, but you wouldn't be out there like performing tasks if that was all you're there to do. She is clearly there to pair up with Harry, to do things, to perform tasks, to engage with the people who are there. And hand holding doesn't send the message that that is your priority. It doesn't send the message that that's what you're there to do. You're creating a bubble with your body language when you're clinging on to someone or holding hands with someone, much like how if you're crossing your arms, you're creating this sort of message that you have a bubble and that's your space and it's less inviting and when you're constantly holding hands with someone else you're kind of creating a bubble with you two it sends the message that oh they're here to be together and it's not quite as approachable it's not as open as if you just would not hold hands the last thing i have to say about the invictus games so far in terms of harry and megan's appearances is why didn't they bring the kiddos along i'm just saying kids love to travel toddlers included going to a hotel feels like such a thrilling thing to them there's so much to explore and they get so excited about like hotel pools and new spaces are wonderful for them they enjoy it it's stimulating and they learn a lot actually so i do not understand not bringing them along it's just bizarre to me I personally hate being away from my kids i get like separation anxiety when they're not here with me so why? I know not everybody's like that and I can appreciate that and I totally get and appreciate people wanting to have their breaks. I don't know. I'm just, I'm constantly aware of the preciousness of their young years and I don't want to miss a minute of it. I never want time away. And so when she's going to be gone for who knows, like at least a week, maybe two, I'm confused why she wouldn't at least bring them along to have a fun hotel getaway while you're working and you can see them in between you can see them in the evenings it does seem like a bit of an odd choice because we've seen that they do have no problem taking nights out away from the kids that's really the only time that they are in the press is if they are out doing something you know on their own like concerts and whatnot so at a time like this where you're going to an event and mentioning the importance of family and a lot of these people bring their families along why not bring them along what do you guys think please leave in the comments your favorite look and your least favorite look i'm excited to see i'm gonna try to get a poll up i always say i'll put a poll up for you guys because i love seeing your guys's opinions and uh what statistically is the least favorite but i always forget to do it so I'll try to remember to do it this time. Thank you so much for being here with me today. I appreciate each and every one of you. If you enjoyed today's video, please click the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. It helps me out so much and you won't miss any of my videos if you click the bell icon as well. For any products that I have on today or what I use to get ready, please check the products tab. It should pop up at the very end of the video on screen, but it should also be somewhere around the description box. Anything else, like for example, this cocktail ring that I have from Saya Bling will be linked in the description box. Thank you again, and I hope that you have a happy day today. I will see you in the next video.